So we've got to be discerning. So in this vein, I want to tell, tell you about a vision that I had my first day that we went, that I landed in Korea. I think I arrived at like five o'clock in the morning. And by the time I got to my hotel and got checked in, I took a little nap and got up and I just, just kind of just began to walk the floor and pray and cry out to the Lord. And I saw a vision and I, and I related it to Korea, but it was just so insightful and it touched my heart so much that I wanted to share it with you in the light of what I'm sharing about intimacy. Because what I saw was I saw the heavens opened. How many could feel the heavens open today? I mean, that was an amazing open heaven. But what I saw with the open heaven is I saw God raining kisses of affection down upon his people. And that as it would hit individuals that were part of the ecclesia, it was like their hearts would just be lit up on fire. They would burst into flame. And then as his kisses would land on the ground, how many believe God loves the earth? God loves the ground. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof and all they that dwell therein. So as his kisses would land on the ground, it would be, it would spring up like this amazing fire. And I watched God's people walk up to this fire and out of the fire, they pulled out a sword and they pulled out a rod of authority. And that this, this affection, this love, this intimacy that God was raining down on us was touching our hearts, but then it was also equipping us for our future. So I began to study this word kisses in the Hebrew. And of course, we know Song of Solomon says, let him kiss me with the kisses of his mouth. That's, a, that's a, a, such an intimate picture about our relationship with the Lord. And so when you look at this word kiss, it's actually um, a word nashak in Hebrew, which means to kiss or to touch. How many want to be touched by the Lord? I, this is a season that we can't just be relating to God by our head. You know, we've got to, we've got to be touched by God. We've got to experience the, the reality of his presence. It means to kiss or to touch. It means to fasten, but it also means, listen to this, to equip with weapons of war, to empower you to rule. And then when you go to the root of that word, it actually means to light a fire. Come on, God wants to light a fire in his church. God wants to equip us. God wants to love us so much. He wants to give us everything that we need to be equipped to face the days that are ahead. But he's telling us that all of that's going to flow out of not just a head knowledge, not just a word knowledge, but it's going to flow out of a personal knowledge, a personal intimacy that comes between us and the Lord. And I think too much the church gets into a mode of just going through the motions. And I think we've got to all... Uh, allow the Lord to come in and to begin to unlock some new things inside of us. How many believe that there's greater heights that God is taking us to? Amen. How many believe there's deeper depths that God is taking us to? And that we're going to have an experience with God in the intimate place, but we're going to have an experience with God that's going to empower us to move into our new season. So it starts out and it says, lays the whole foundation for the year by saying, the Lord is my shepherd. So just lay your hand on your heart. That word shepherd is the word ra'ah in Hebrew, which can also be translated, he's my best friend. Honey, you're my best friend on earth, but he's my best friend. He's my best friend. And if you've got other best friends than him, let's make it a priority this year to make Jesus our best friend. Amen? So when the Lord is our shepherd, then it says, I shall not want and you heard from Apostle Tom last week or two weeks ago when he said, we looked up this word want, and it means this. It means I shall not lack. I shall not have a need. I shall not be without. I shall not be decreased. I shall not fail. I shall not be grieved. What an amazing decree over this year. And then I think you also heard Apostle Tom share that the Lord led him to look up the number 2023 in the Strong's Concordance, and it is the word epicoregio, epicoregio, which when you look it up, it means, um, it means to lavishly, abundantly furnish and supply. So we believe this is a promise from God that this is going to be a year of lavish and abundant supply. And when I say that, don't just think money. 
Come on, lavish an abundant supply of power. Lavish an abundant supply of joy. Lavish an abundant supply of vision. Lavish an abundant supply of health. Lavish an abundant supply of peace. Come on, whatever it is that you need, Jesus is saying, I want to give you lavish an abundant supply so that you won't fail, you won't, you won't lack, you won't have a need. Come on, the Lord wants to do that for us, I believe, this year. The Lord is our shepherd, I shall not want. Now, this is the Hebrew year, Pei Gamel, and we talked about that some last fall. But Gamel is the three, and it's the third letter in the Hebrew al alphabet. And Gamel is, a, 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 it pictures a couple of things. Um, one is, is it's a picture of camels. Don't turn to somebody and say you look like a camel, okay? That would be like the worst thing to say. But you know what? Camels in the Old Testament were always a symbol of supply. The camels, the dromedaries, the, 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 the lines of camels that would come sometimes 100, 200 camels at a time carried the wealth. They were the ones that transferred wealth. They were the ones that represented the supply lines. How many believe that in this year of Gamel, God wants to increase your supply lines? Amen? God wants to increase your, your streams of blessing, your streams of income, your streams of whatever it is God's bringing to you. So camels is one of of the aspects of Gamel. But the other aspect is Gamel is pictured as a wealthy benefactor who chases down people who are in need and pours blessings upon them. Now what's amazing about this is that this goes directly with Epicoregio. Because Epicoregio actually means on behalf of the choir. And so what does this mean? So epicoregio was used this way. It was used when they, they had a choir, they had choreography, they had some kind of presentation, they had some kind of mission, some kind of assignment, and a wealthy benefactor would come in and supply all the needs on behalf of the choir so that they could go and accomplish their mission. How many believe God wants to furnish you and give you provision for the vision? Come on, that's key this year. Provision for the vision. That's that wealthy benefactor. But I want to shift it just a minute and say that not only are we looking at the Lord as our Gamel, but we need to understand we are Gamel. We have been so blessed. We have been so given to by the Lord. We, become, we are become so wealthy in the spirit that now we become Gamel that we can go out and we can chase down other people that are in need and we can begin to heap blessing upon them. Come on, we can heal, bring healing to them. We can bring deliverance to them. We can bring the word of the Lord to them. We can bring finances to them. We can bring them whatever it is that they need because we've been so blessed. See, God said to Abraham, I want to bless you. And make you a blessing. Church, we got to move into that mentality. That whatever it is God's blessing us with, we got to learn the reason he's blessing us is not just so that we're blessed, but to bless us to make us a blessing. 